Hey everybody and welcome to our Green Acres. I'm Teresa. Today's video is going to be such a fun one because I'm collaborating with a couple of my really good friends, Julie from Julie's Designs and Signs and Sherry from Canterbury Cottage. In today's video, we are doing a challenge throwdown. We are going to challenge each other to go thrifting or find things from our home but we are going to take five items and each of us are going to put our own spin on how we're going to upcycle them and make them into some pretty home decor. The five items that we are challenging each other to upcycle are going to be a wood item, a figurine, a vase, books, and a piece of clothing. We are each going to put our own special touch on it, upcycle them, and give you different ways of how you can take these five items upcycle them and make them some pretty home decor for your home. So I hope y'all enjoy the video today. I hope you get lots of ideas and inspiration for your home. Make sure to go out and subscribe and follow Julie at her channel and also Sherry over at her channel. And I'll have all their information listed down below in the description box. So let's get into the video. First thrifted piece that we challenged each other with was a wood piece. Now we could take any piece that we wanted if it was made of wood. So I have these two vintage wooden frames that I picked up at Goodwill and I paid $4.99 for both of them. As you can see, these are really old and the um, graphics in these are just, they are so old, they were tearing apart. Somebody had cut those from, it looked like old magazines. So these frames right here were really old. The first thing I did since they were a red looking wood, I took them outside and I sprayed them with some black spray paint just so that wood would not bleed through my white chalk paint. I gave them a couple of layers of white chalk paint. Then I went over them with a little sanding paper and I just went around and just scuffed up around the frames just to give them a distressed look and bring back some of that black paint. Now I'm going to go over this one. I'm going to paint over the glass with my white chalk paint. I'm going to do a couple layers and I'm going to let it dry really good. I'm going to use this really pretty piece of decoupage paper. You get two designs on it. I will make sure to link this sheet down below, but this is a beautiful design that we can use for spring and summertime. I decided to go with the birds on this, so I applied it using my liquid, my DIY liquid patina. I worked in sections, I got it applied to the glass, then I rolled over it with a brayer. Once it dried, I'm just going to go around and I'm going to cut around it with my scissors and cut it down to the size of the glass. Now, I could go with the other design for the other frame and do the birds and the bees and have two that are really, you know, matchy-matchy. But for video purposes today, I'm going to give you two different kinds of ideas of what you can do if you find some little oval frames out like this. Now, the backs of these, I don't know who made these, but these were like somebody had cut backs to these and they didn't really go with the frames so i'm having to use some hot glue and some duct tape to get my image the glass to stay back in the frame now here is this one and i think this one turned out so pretty i love birds and this right here is going to be now a great addition to set out in our spring and our, su our summertime vignettes Now I'm going to show y'all another idea using the second frame. I bought this beautiful dresser drawer. This is like a contact paper that you can put in drawers, but it also makes a great piece to use on our projects. This row right here, you get a lot of paper on it, and it was very inexpensive. It's got an adhesive back. All you do is peel the paper off, so we're going to use that to upcycle this other frame. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to make a bunny mold, but this has two bunnies in it, a little head and then one that's got like, you know, its whole body. But I'm going to use some fast cast. I don't know if you've ever used this product before, but I also have this linked in my Amazon store. But you just mix equal parts of bottle A and equal parts of bottle B, stir them together really good, mix them, and you want to pour pretty quick because this stuff sets up in a matter of minutes. Make sure to try not to overflow your mold, and that sometimes is hard to do depending on what kind of mold you're using, but try not to get it over the sides if you can. But if you do, it's okay. You can always go back and remove that with your fingers or a little X-Acto knife. 
but usually I always mix up too much and when I do I just go on ahead get some other molds out that I like and just go on and make up some for for future projects because we don't like to waste it now once this dries it comes out solid white and you know that it's dry at that point and I did overflow there around his legs and you can see I just pulled it off with my fingers now this right here is such a fast way to make a mold but you can also use dry you know air dry clay if you prefer that but i love using this little fast cast and i had some extra so i got out my trim my trims mold and i just poured some in it and this way now i've got some pieces made up for future projects now i'm going to take my little bunny and i'm going to take the glass that come out of the frame and i'm going to set it on one of the designs on the beautiful contact paper I'm just kind of centering everything and getting the design in the glass the way that, you know, I desire it to be. Now I'm just going to go around it once I traced around and I've got the, the graphic all in the glass because I love, I want to really capture this floral bouquet right here. I just cut it out with my scissors. Now using a little piece of painter's tape, I'm just going to tape it in place so it don't move around and then I'm just going to remove the adhesive back and just press it down onto the glass. Now I'm going to press it down really good with my hands using my fingers and I'm going to work out any wrinkles. The thing I love about this contact paper is it's very forgiving. If you have wrinkles you can always pull it back up, lay it back down and you know and resurface it. I went over it with my brayer and that also helps with the wrinkles. I'm going to take my second frame I'm going to put this back in and using a little hot glue I'm going to put back um, the back and I have to glue this one in also because like I say these were kind of like an afterthought on these frames I think somebody just made you know made these um, handmade them and they didn't fit exactly into the frames so just using a little bit of duct tape I'm just going to go on and put that on the back now I'm just going to go around and show you how easy it is to distress these little frames. You can also just go around and chip around with your fingernail just to make sure you've got some paint that's chipping off just to make it look like it's unintentional and it's, you know, more worn look looking. And then you can also take your sandpaper and go over it that way. Now I wanted to kind of tone down the shininess of that contact paper. So I took a sanding block and very lightly I went over it and I just kind of toned it down because it was a little too shiny and I want it to look more vintage looking. Now we've got our beautiful rabbit. I'm going to go over him with a little bit of chalk paint. You do not have to do this. You can leave him the white that, you know, it, it's original color of how the fast cast resin dries but i always kind of like to go down go over him and just kind of just give him a coat of chalk paint so that once he dried i just adhered him using some hot glue on top of the glass and now look how beautiful this little picture turned out just another idea of something you can do if you run across some little wooden oval frames at the thrift store I hope y'all are enjoying the video so far, and if you are, make sure to hit that like button. I hope you're enjoying seeing all the ways that I have upcycled these five items, and make sure when you're done with my video to go over and check out and see how Julie upcycles these five items over at her channel, and also go visit Sherry at Canterbury Cottage and see what spin she puts on these. I know Sherry has such a creative imagination. I can't wait to see her video. Now, another fun piece that we challenged each other to go out and thrift and upcycle was a figurine. Well, y'all, I love, and I also I collect uh, vintage lady bust forms, these sculptures. And so far, I have three of these. But I recently picked this one up, and I think she was a couple of dollars. As you can see, she has seen better days. It looks like she has been broken and people have tried to repair her. So she's got a lot of excess glue, dried glue on her, and she's also got a chunk out of her shoulder. I'm gonna try to disguise and fix that little piece out of her shoulder. And a lot of times you can use air dry clay to do this, but I'm just using some little wood putty that I have, and I'm just going in and kind of forming it just to make it look like the other shoulder. And also my, my wood putty was a little dried up, 
So you can also use a little wood glue, mix it in there with that little, if your putty's a little bit too dry, add a little bit of wood glue in it and that'll also add a great bonding agent. Now I'm taking my, my little wood putty that I have and I'm just going around and I'm just working it in some of those cracks where she had previously broke and I'm just kind of going in, filling those in as much as I can. So when I go to paint her, a lot of those cracks won't show up. You know, in the end, she won't be perfect, but I feel like we can upcycle her and make her a lot better. Now, once I got the cracks filled up and I got her shoulder repaired as best I could and I let everything dry, now I'm going to use Dixie Bell's color drop cloth. This is a beautiful color if you want a really neutral color and you don't want to do like, you know, stark white. This is a beautiful color. So I'm going to add a little bit of baking soda. Now, I went over her with a just a, a layer of paint first and I stopped at her chin. I didn't want to lose the details in her face. So as you can see, I just went up to her chin with the paint and I stopped. I mixed in some baking soda with, my, with this paint right here. And now I'm going to go over her with a chippy brush and give her a textured look. Since she has so many imperfections, this textured paint will ha help hide a lot of those. So a lot of times if you've got a piece that's got damage to it, textured paint is a great technique to use and it will disguise a lot of those flaws. Now, so her face and her head will match the bottom. I'm just lightly going over and I'm just kind of whitewashing her face. Because like I say, I don't want to lose a lot of those details, especially in her eyes. I want a lot of that to come back through. So once I kind of went over and whitewashed her face, her head, and her hair, now I'm going to go over with my cheapy brush and very lightly go over it. I don't have a lot of the textured paint on my brush. I'm kind of, as you can see, I'm dabbing a lot of it off, but I do want her to match. So now that I've got her all fixed up, and I think she looks a lot better, now we can style her. But before I style her, I'm going to show you another piece, thrifted piece that was in our challenge, and that was a piece of clothing. We challenged each other to make something out of a piece of clothing. So for my piece of clothing, and I love looking at clothing at the thrift stores because you can find some beautiful pieces and you can use clothing for so many things on your projects. But always look at the necklines and some of the details on ladies' tops, especially because they will have some beautiful details and embellishments. So that's what we're going to do with this. I thought the neckline and the sleeves on this shirt were absolutely beautiful. But as you can see throughout the video, I'm going to use a lot of this top on other projects as well. But I want to cut around this beautiful pearl neckline and I want to cut it out. And I'm going to show you how we can decorate the little vintage lady um, little bust form sculpture that I just upcycled. I'm going to show you how we can add this. It's a beautiful embellishment to her. Just take an inexpensive top or maybe a top that you have, you know, already at home that you've worn. Maybe it's outdated. Maybe it's got stains on it. Don't throw that out. Use it and just see if you can make home decor out of it. Now here is the lady styled with nothing, just so you can see what a little bit of, you know, wood putty and also some textured paint did to make her look beautiful again. And now here is that beautiful pearl neckline off that top. I thought it would make a, it, it fit her perfect and it made such a beautiful embellishment just to add a little bit more detail to her and just give her that really feminine touch. When Sherry, Julie, and I were deciding on what we wanted our five challenge items to be, y'all know we had to throw in some books. Books are a great thing to make over and, and make beautiful decor for your home. You can find these all over the place. You can purchase them at Dollar Tree. You may have read them. You may have a stack of them sitting at home. But at my thrift store, this is just, you know, a look at what we have. You can get the softbacks. You can get hardcovers. And a lot of times you can actually find books that have got beautiful pictures in them. And you can actually, you know, use graphics and pictures in your books. The first thing I wanted to do to this book for this project was get this writing, embossed writing off the binder. Now, I tried alcohol and I also tried sandpaper and it just wouldn't go away. So I'm just going to very quickly, I'm just going to use my top paint, paint over it just so it won't show up. 
Now, if you have a good technique of how you remove that embossed writing off your binders, leave it down below. But I've got another beautiful piece of decoupage paper, and I'm going to link it down below. But I'm just going to use it, and I'm going to use it and decoupage this book. Now, it will not fit over the entire book, but the area of the book that you will see, it does cover. It will go around the binder just fine, and I didn't cut it down because I didn't, I didn't know how much of the book it would cover, so I left those, you know, white edges around it, but we, we will remove those in just a minute. Now, using my DIY liquid vitina, I applied the decoupage paper to the book, and then I let it dry really well. And now I'm going to go around and sand off the excess paper. Using books for home decor is one of my favorite projects, but there are so many creative things that you can do with books. Once I got all the excess paper removed around the edges, then I went around on the back. I trimmed off that little piece off the back, and then I took my sandpaper, and I just moved down the back. Now, I'm just going to do a single book for this, but I'm just going to show you how beautiful this turned out. This will be gorgeous to set this up like in a beautiful spring or summer, summer floral basket. Just set it out in your vignettes, and it just has a beautiful detail. And now I'm going to take that top again. This was made out of some really good fabric. It was more like a cotton texture, but it looked really good, but it didn't fray. You know, it didn't get stringy. And that's the kind of fabric that I love. Just taking an inexpensive thrifted top, this saves us a ton of money from having to go and buy spools of fabric and lace at the, you know, at the craft stores because fabric and lace can really run up in the money. But I've, I've used this now on a couple of projects. And like I say, throughout the video, I'm going to keep using the top. So I'm just going to make a three looped bow. And I just tied it off really good, have some little tails, and just showing you how, how easy it is to add a little bit, you know, more detail to the book. You can add a beautiful little looped bow. It was so easy to make. And like I say, we took our thrifted top and we made it. And now we've got a great little embellishment for the book. You can hot glue it on the front. You can just lay it down, you know, in your vignettes. Just giving you different ideas now of how you can embellish your books once you get them made. I'm going to show you another creative way that you can upcycle some more books. I took another book that I had on hand and I'm going to take another one of these trim molds. I took one that I felt like would be wide enough to cover up the binder of the book I was using. I put some cornstarch in my mold. You just kind of want to dump it off and now I'm going to take my air dry clay. Now anytime you store your clay, always store it with a wet wipe. It really keeps it moist and keeps it from drying out. Now I'm just going to take enough that I feel like will go in that mold that I'm going to use. I work it around in my hands. You want to warm it up to where it'll work, you know, better for you. And then just work it down into that mold. Keep removing excess clay out of your mold with your fingers and use those little raised edges to get the, the clay off of, you know, the areas that you don't need it. Now, once you get it down in the mold really good and you get all that excess clay worked away, I like to roll over mine with a brayer just to make the back really flat. Now, once I got it done, you just roll it out of the mold, and I think it's going to fit on the book perfect. Now, I always use wood glue to attach my clay molds, but you can use any kind of, you know, glue that you have on hand that will work good with your clay. Now, my, my mold is going to be a little bit too long for the book, but we will get a little razor blade, and we will just trim it down. Since this mold was so long, I worked in sections on my book. I applied wood glue to the book and also to the clay mold. Now, when you're working with your clay mold, you just want to be really careful. Make sure to, they've got a good, you know, they adhere really well with your fingers, but don't mash them down too hard so you don't, you know, lose that impression of your detail. I did went, go in with my little razor blade. 
I trimmed off the edge. I made two books, and now I'm going to go over it with Dixie Belle, and I'm going to use the color Drop Cloth again. I think this is a beautiful color, so I'm going to make sure I paint over that binder really well, and then I'm going to go over actually the whole book. This is what I'm going to put on the top of the book, but you can see how well it matches those little vintage bunnies. But, so now I'm just going to go over both books, give them a good layer of the drop cloth, let them dry really good. Now we're going to cut out and we're going to um, put these little bunnies on here. I absolutely love these. These are absolutely beautiful. My friend Monica, she sent me a whole little package of all kinds of little craft supplies. She knows exactly what I love and there were so many little bunny items in it. But these are the first things that I've used so far, but I know I'm going to enjoy all of her little special gifts. So thank you so much, Monica, for sending me all these beautiful little little um, treasures. But these little vintage bunnies fit perfect on these little books, and I think they look so cute for spring and summer. Now I'm taking some more of that top. I'm just going to rip me some strips. Now, a lot of times if you've got a strip of fabric that won't fit around your project, Cut two strips or rip two strips and glue them together. Put the little glued edge somewhere where it, where it won't be visible. And on these books, I'm going to, of course, put that on the bottom. So it's a perfect way to make your fabric longer and go further. Now, I just put two strips together and I'm going to wrap them around the books and tie them in a bow. I also wanted to mention, if you didn't want to use Mod Podge or DIY Liquid Patina to adhere your um, bunnies, graphic to your books. You could also use a glue stick. Glue sticks work really well with these two. Now I'm going to take this book stack. I have upcycled these books in a previous video and I showed y'all how to make take some Dollar Tree or just some thrifted books and make them look vintage. Well now I'm going to do something else with these since I've got these beautiful bunnies and this is all the bunnies that come in the package that Monica sent. I think you got about 12 sheets and you got two graphics on a sheet but all of these graphics of these bunnies are absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to select another one. I'm going to cut it out and I just put it on top of these books and tied some more of that pretty a ripped fabric around it and just giving you another idea of how you can style your books throughout your home and make some really beautiful home decor out of them. next challenge item was a vase and y'all I probably struggled with this one the worst but I you know what is the definition of a vase to me it is just something that holds flowers so it could have a handle on it it could look like a picture but this was the closest thing that I could find that I had that I felt like I could upcycle so I just kind of started get my creative juices going and I went a couple of different directions on this but I decided to paint it and I went outside and I spray painted it white with my favorite ultra matte white Rust-Oleum spray paint. It's got good coverage. I gave it a couple layers, let it dry, and then I brought it in and I decided I wanted to use this beautiful decoupage paper. A lot of times I have a lot of decoupage paper on hand and I'm glad I do because it really comes in handy when you're, you know, you're looking at a project piece and you're thinking, okay, what do I want to do to it? Do I want to decoupage, stencil, stamp, transfer? So a lot of times I love having different options on hand, but I had this piece left over from a previous project and I thought it was absolutely beautiful. So I thought, why not use it? So I applied it to the front of the vase. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more detail to it. I'm gonna take out again my fast cast. I'm gonna mix it up. And remember it is just equal parts of A and B. You just mix them together and you stir them up really good, but you want to work fast because remember this stuff, it sets up really fast. Now I'm taking a little frame mold that I have, and I think this is in my Amazon store because I have a lot of molds in my Amazon store. So make sure to go out to my Amazon store and look there. Now I'm just going to pour it in. And like I told y'all, make sure, try not to over pour. 
and that way you won't have as much cleanup to do. But if you do have some areas that it does over pour, just go around with your fingers or a little razor blade and just cut it or tear it away. Now this frame right here was absolutely beautiful and I went back and forth on what color that I should paint it. So I'm gonna leave in what I did. I looked at it and I thought, well, I don't know. I think I want it to be gold. So I took out my trusty rub and buff. This is also on my Amazon store, y'all. It comes in different colors and I cannot recommend this product enough. I've been using this same tube for over two years. A little bit of this goes a long way but the results are absolutely beautiful. So if you don't invest in any kind of <laughs> project supplies, make sure to get some rub and buff because I don't know if I could, you know, DIY without it. But so I did both of them gold. I put it on the vase and I wasn't happy. There just wasn't enough color contrast once I put it up to that decoupage paper. So I tried the gold, I didn't like it, so I'm gonna go over it with a drop cloth and I'm gonna go with a more neutral color. I felt like it really, it had so much dark in the decoupage paper with the dark background that I feel like painting these details a lighter color worked better. I just applied both of them using some hot glue, I put them on the vase, I made another loop bow out of that same top, I used a little hot glue, I attached it on the front, and now we've got a beautiful vase that we can display some spring and some summer florals in. I want to show y'all this beautiful bunny that I ordered from Julie's website. And I'm going to have all of Julie and Sherry's information down below. But y'all, make sure to go out and check out Julie's online website. She's got some beautiful home decor pieces and she sells a lot of the DIY supplies and products. But this little bunny right here, I've, I've um, sent Julie a message and I'm like, which little bunny is this? Because I got to have him. So she told me I ordered him and he came and y'all look how beautiful he is styled with these books. So make sure to go over and check out Julie's online shop because I know this little bunny right here, he won't last long. He'll sell out. She also offers $9 flat rate shipping. So that means no matter how many products or pro pieces that you order, it's going to be $9 for your shipping. So just wanted to add that in. I absolutely love my bunny. So I wanted to share it with you and go out and check out, out all the rest of her beautiful home decor that she has on her website. I hope y'all enjoyed the video today and I hope you got lots of ideas of how you can take five items from the thrift store, upcycle them, make some pretty home decor, and we at least gave you 15 different ideas. I'm going to make sure to leave the links to Julie and Sherry's channels down below. Make sure to go out, check out their videos to get more inspiration on these items. And if you are new to my channel, make sure on the way out to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know every time I upload a video. Until the next video, y'all, I hope y'all have a great week. I love y'all, and I'll see y'all again soon. Bye, y'all.